So I have a knee injury. I'm on the IR right now. Three to six. I'll let the doctor tell you to you himself. I am not a doctor. I do not have any doctorate degrees. MCL is right there. This overcompensates injuries from his butterfly and other goalie positions. So I just spent three days on a train coming home from Vancouver after I spent the whole week training my goalie coach, Pasco Volana. But leading up to that trip, my knee had really been bothering me for a little bit, but the week of training exacerbated everything. To get closer with your knees, but wider with your feet? Or does that tweak your knee too much? He needs a little bit of rest on that knee, I think. I'm gonna bring this stim machine for him. Once the leg gets healed, I'd like to see you kind of dipping a little bit lower. So after the skate, I kind of took my lacrosse ball and I dug it right into my knee, kind of down here, and it was pissed. Oh. Now being injured sucks, no matter what sport you play, because all you want to do is play. But luckily I still have five months till I have to report for next season. So time's definitely on our side. And with Canada shutting down in this super COVID frenzy as of late, it hasn't really made me miss much. However, in that time, maybe reflect a lot on what I can do to use this time and injury to better myself and use up my free time. I developed a new daily mobility routine and warm up routine with my trainer, Brian Collins. Hello ladies, I'm still single. Brought my acupuncture doctor in to help me rehab this injury. We also revamped all my workouts to accommodate my knee and still trying to make gains. What a good looking ball guard speed coming up. There you go, right there. That's his first three exercises of the actual workout today. Also, uh, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. You gotta worry. I've also been talking to a lot of teams, trying to get signed for next season, working with my agent to get a place to play for next year. Uh, I'm looking at a lot of stuff back in Europe, just trying to keep my options open. I got two years left uh, in my business program. I'll shoot those references over to you. And again, thank you very much for the time and you have a great night. Sounds good. Looking forward to chatting more. I also started a brand new podcast with my YouTube ally and buddy Pat Shea. Check, 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 Mike, check, Mike, check, Sling the Biscuit, episode two, two, two. Sharp as a razor right there. I shot an Instagram campaign for the NHL and Circle K and Pepsi. And finally, I started experimenting with drinks a lot to kind of become a barista. I don't know. That's not bad. So I'm doing this more regular. But fast forward to today. Faster! Faster! Today's like, what, four weeks, give or take, since my injury started? So we're about a month in. My knee does not feel what I'd like it to. We were kind of hoping, we were three to six weeks, originally, give or take, aiming for four weeks, gonna be back, ready to go, skating. Not quite there yet. Four weeks into his recovery, we've been doing a lot of hip dominant work, so we've been practicing our deadlift, no lateral work, making good progress. Hips are a lot stronger, and uh, deadlifts looking really good. Almost 300 pounds. 600 pounds. 600 pounds. Yeah, 600 pounds. Can be back on the ice in two to three weeks. I felt a bad sneeze going on there. I was trying to hold it back. I was like, don't sneeze, don't sneeze. You're gonna think I'm giving you COVID. So my MCL sprain is gonna have me doing a lot more of this for the next two to three weeks at the minimum, trying to get back to 100% health. But if I'm being honest, I think I've been getting a little bit complacent with my lower body the last couple months and focused so much on the on ice that I've been neglecting the 100% health that I need to play in no matter where I am next season, considering the hip impingements that I have and the other lower body issues. So it's been a nice wake up call. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be trying to keep myself busy, working on a few projects that I have been for the last little bit and trying to have some fun while doing it. With my MCL sprain, I'm not gonna be able to skate for the next two to three weeks, but there are some really positive things kind of coming up around the corner. I'm ordering brand new gear for next season. Next week, doing custom order Royal Sports Winnipeg, so that'll be next week's video. My true 20.1 stuff, my one year review is coming up. I'm gonna be doing that, I think, after that. Although I can't skate, I do have an ice time. I full skate with Pasco from that week of training that I haven't shared. We're a lot on post integrations, RVH plays. Just, he's one of the most knowledgeable goalie coaches on the planet for a reason. And I think anytime I get to share information that's coming directly out of his mouth, I get smarter from having the ice time from watching the video and anybody watching becomes more intelligent. He is a privilege to work with and he's just such a good guy and such a good mentor. I want to show that skate. Also, Magic Spoon, this protein-based cereal, is a sponsor for today's video. I'm telling you, this shit is legit. We'll talk more about it after to Vancouver for that skate. Okay, so let's go back. We'll do it again. Go, go to two. Slow, methodical, Carey Price. It's the reason why he's one of the best goalies on the planet is because he starts with positioning, then he works through his timing, and then he's rewarded with speed. To me, that's the secret of Carey Price. Push, stop, push, stop. Everything is ahead. Good, over, good. Try to marry the look with the body. Now, push, good, back. As soon as it relieves my stick, your foot and my stick are married together. And push, got it? Come back again, ready? And eyes, feet, good. Eyes, feet, eyes, feet, eyes, feet, eyes, feet. Good, 
What do you do on angle here? Always project the glove. The glove will look like there's space to the shooter, but to the puck, the glove looks as big as you are. And we're more worried about the puck than the player. Okay, that's our job. Go, over, good, back. Push right away. You gotta get there before he does. Go, push, good, high glove. Bang, good. Let's go back again. Push one, good. Out, Eddie, pass the puck into my feet. Ready, go, push, good. Overlap, bad pass, no one's there, you're in an overlap, good. Okay, so now keep in mind, Eddie's not there, it was a shot off me, there's no one back there and you're good. Okay, now I'm back here. The VH is a reactionary save, it's not a block save. For example, go into VH now, and I'm sitting there, an awful lot of things can happen. Push. So if Eddie drives the net and you're in a VH, no. This is one of the things that we see in, in the National Hockey League when I watch hockey all the time. It's a huge, huge problem in the NHL right now. Goalies going down above the goal line in an RVH outside of the inside rink. And you're in an RVH. Go ahead. So now I've got puck proximity. I can shoot it at your head. Very similar to the Buffalo Sabres goal. Right? And then Eddie just has to diagonally attack that way. Go. And then he shoots and it makes the save a lot harder. Plus, what does Eddie know about you? You have to come off. So Eddie's going to short receive and he's going to deke you on the blocker side. Ready? RVH, go. Short receive, blocker, block, blocker side. Okay, now we talked about it so everybody knows what the hell is going on, but in reality it's scary. Okay? Below the goal line. Okay, Eddie to below the goal line. Ready? Go. Push. A lot of goalies will drop into an RVH here. Do you want me in there for the bigger? No. Just get to the post. Okay, if Eddie gives me the puck here and you go down in an RVH, okay, stand up. When you pass to me, when I receive it, you drive. Go. Pass to me, you're in an RVH, I pass to her, and then she shoots the puck. You just know what I'm gonna do, otherwise that could surprise the shit out of you. If I sauce it and it's on her tape, she's gonna score. That's what they used to do to carry Price too for a while. Okay, you guys got it? All right, go. Good, all we're doing is shooting down to activate the eyes on the ice. Go. You're on, uh, you can go on this side, sure. And pivot, push. Good. So just track that puck, get lower please. Ready, go. Good. When you see him struggle with the reception, what can you do? We're assuming there's no backside pressure. You can gain depth. Ready, go. You should probably be at three quarter crease. Okay, so you're 50 to three quarter and get the nice pivot retraction in there. Get that foot underneath your body. Go, good. Much better, that should be elevation. Don't make it flat. Go. Good, not bad. Steer the puck automatically when you go down, steer your stick. Ready, go, bang, steer your stick, bang. That's where you want the puck to go. Because now she's driving and has to turn away from you. It's a good thing when they turn away from you. Good, five hole. Yep. That's all right. If, if it's on the right side, yeah. If it's off your five hole, you use your pad. But if it's right at your five hole, you got to use your stick. Five hole, go. Good, keep your stick in front of you, please. Ready, go. Five hole. Good. Good, you don't even have to move, do you? Ready, go. Just have to butterfly. Good. You happy with those rebounds? No, yes, you are, because the puck is kissing the boards, it's in, it's in control, no one can get it, and everybody's ass and numbers, and the back of their helmet's going to be facing you. That's a good thing. Go. No, when it's at the pad, we don't use the stick, because we're going to cause a problem. Ready? Go. Good. That's okay. Ready? And go. Good. Okay, ready? And VH, go! Bang. So there's your rebound, right? Here, go! Shot. Good. Try it again. Ready? Here. VH. Ready? Go! So listen. 
you have to point your toe where you want to go. That camera over there uh, is okay, but it'd be better off right here. So right away, your elbow's got to be on the outside, okay, because she's here. Go, VH, point your toe. Good, much better. You see the difference? Now the rebound was terrible. Go, shot. Good. Good. So we just go down. We don't go down and lean back, but that was good. Let's do it again. Ready? Shot. Good. Ready? Go. Good. Go. Good. And that's, you know, you know he's there, right? So that kick wasn't a bad kick because what does he have to do to get it? He has to go backwards and that's going to give you a ton of time for you, a ton of time for your defenseman to scalp him, right? VH. Good. Back. Go. Good. Nice save. When we're doing this, are you starting to see a systematic approach? Good. We're going to add another player here. Look at that big screen. Look at that. You get like a nice little iPad in there too. It's a Tesla. That's also a Tesla. Hey, look. It's a Tesla. Another Tesla. It's another one right there. Yep. That one kind of matches my shirt, actually. And here's the minivan. That's a Tesla. That's a Tesla. That's a Tesla. Tesla. Whoa, another Tesla. Three, two, one. Look at that. Man, if I had a Tesla too, the amount of ass I could haul in that thing. And not like ass like that, but just like putting stuff in the back and like hauling it, like gear, groceries. It's not a bad idea. Anyway. You know, it's not every day you get to work with a company that you genuinely, truly believe in and want to support. I tell you how much I believe in Magic Spoon and how awesome their cereal is, but I spent $500 to buy a bunch of cereal cases. It's high protein, low carb, keto friendly, grain free cereal. And there's just so many fantastic things about it. They have awesome flavors. They got cocoa, frosted, and my favorite, fruity. There's almost no carbs in it. There's no sugar in it. Super high protein, low calorie. It's absolutely insane. And with my knee injury, my MCL sprain, I'm having to make sure that I'm having a high protein diet so that Every day I'm making steps towards a recovery and making sure that my knee's good to go. I'm getting back on the ice. Having a high protein diet is critical. And Magic Spoon, the fact that cereal, breakfast cereal, I'm having cereal for breakfast every day. There's no way it can taste that good and be healthy. You're lying. Well, if I'm wrong, I don't want to be right. The fruity one tastes just like Fruit Loops, even better than Fruit Loops, and there's no aftertaste that the shit diabetic sugary fruit loops have if you go to the link in the description you go to magicspoon.com slash trap sucks use the promo code trap sucks you can save yourself five bucks i tell you that i'd recommend the cereal and that you should pick it up but i think the fact that i already bought 500 bucks worth of cases of cereal tells you how awesome it is it's an old boy so pick up the cereal as always make sure you subscribe you can see the next video when the true review comes out when i order my new gear next week when i announce my signing which is basically ready to go and get announced anytime now Subscribe, it's free. You can unsubscribe anytime if you end up hating me. My new podcast, episode five of Sling the Biscuit with Pat Shea just dropped. So check that out, link in the description. And I will see you on the next Monday upload next week, hopefully for my new gear. See you then. So the bars reopened last night and somebody was having a tough night. Oh, Jesus. So since my injury is pretty delicate, the uh, doc gives me this uh, bunny. He's got like a little button. If I'm in pain and there's too much electricity going through me, I just press the button and then it comes in and saves me. Of course you should watch today's video. Come on. That's a really good view. Five bucks a month, five smackaroos. You get stuff like this. Exclusive behind the scenes content, YouTube channel number. Some perks, early access to the Slam the Biscuit podcast, early access to these videos and more at the uh, joint channel member page. Also, I think he has a Patreon, so I give him money there so he can give me money.